You know, as Lao Tzu mentioned one day, he said that uh, those who have knowledge don't predict, and those who predict don't have knowledge. Welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Just sit back, relax, and learn from the leaders of today. It's a journey. Each one is different, unique, inspiring. Let's get started. This episode is powered by J Ventures, a community-driven VC fund in Silicon Valley, in partnership with Leumi Tech, sponsored by Hippo Insurance, Opwest Labs, Turing, Hillel at Stanford, Leap, and in media partnership with C-Tech. Welcome to another episode of 20 Minute Leaders. I'm joined today by Dmitry Gazerski, CTO and founder of Clickins LTD. Dimitri is a software architect and technology consultant with a proven record of building military-grade intelligence systems. As the co-founder and CTO of Clickins, he has two patents pending on his field of research includes ontology, domain-driven design, graph technologies, link analysis, computer vision, and artificial intelligence. Dima has created companies and worked with a wide range of customers from startup companies to government organizations. He holds a BSc and degree in economics and information systems engineering from the Technon Institute of Technology. Dima Gezerski, welcome to 20 Minute Leaders. Thank you so much for being with me. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Are you calling from the offices right now? Yes, yes, we are. Yes. Uh, I love post-COVID. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And uh, today I get to talk about visual intelligence and I get to talk about artificial intelligence, a subject that is very dear to my heart. But I'm, I'm also excited to pick your brain on, on the way that this the, the implications that your technology is going to have on society and uh, the way that you're approaching it and a little bit about your upbringing all the way from the Technion uh, and engineer by trade uh, and now uh, running this amazing company. So Dima, g- give me a, a short rundown who, who you are before we get to the, the amazing technology you're working on. Yeah, as you pointed out, I graduated from Technion in 1999. Then I had uh, six years serving in military. Uh, after that, I was a software solution architect for multiple companies, startups, governments. Had a lot of background in military intelligence, in architecting and implementing intelligence systems. And uh, I run professional services company, consulting. So with this knowledge, I come to Clickens and uh, actually partnered with Eugene, CEO. Uh, who comes from insurance industry. So I bring my background to solve uh, complex problems using right. our uh, expertise, yeah. Now, t- tell me a little bit then about, about Clickins. So your, your co-founder, Eugene, is coming from the insurance industry. You're coming military intelligence, you know, very heavy duty engineering, uh, very, you know, uh, uh, very professional fields. What do you guys decide to do together within Clickins and, and how do you decide to leverage deep technology to do something really interesting? Uh, the Clickins was founded in 2014 with, with uh, the goal to tackle insurance fraud. So we addressed insurance fraud as, a, as much as terrorist activity. And uh, wow. Yeah, so the fraudsters, in, in my mind, are terrorists, and uh, we address them exactly as the, those. So we, build, uh, we started building the platform for, for insurance fraud prevention by employing the principles from uh, military-grade intelligence. So uh, these principles actually are the fundamental things that we are using in Clickins, and with the time we focused on on the vertical of uh, automotive. So we started working with uh, uh, fleet managements and uh, dealerships and insurance companies. So today we work, operate in different uh, verticals. We do visual intelligence for those verticals, automatic vehicle inspections by using images, only images. And right. now, uh, yeah. I, I have to zoom out a little bit uh, for context. Uh, you, when you're talking about fraud, uh, and you're you know saying uh, you know you, you you have a you have a very unique perspective on on, on how to treat fraud, and uh, you know most of us in our daily life, you know we, we don't experience that fraud, uh, right? Unless you're working in insurance, or unless you're 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 actively observing. And tell me a little bit about what 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 is actually happening around the world. What is the scale of this problem? Uh, I would uh, the scale of, of this problem is enormous. It's uh, trillions of dollars that insurance companies and uh, other companies lose to fraudsters. Uh, but I would rather uh, maybe focus on on the 
uh, on the domain that we are currently working operating in, and it's, uh, it's automat- automotive industry. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, the, the we are working in a in a AI playground where mm-hmm. companies that we compete with they they are calling themselves AI companies. So they use AI first approach, and uh, we are, I think Clickens is standing out of this competition because of uh, uh, really its its understanding of visual intelligence companies that call call themselves visual intelligence company use it as a buzzword. We really mean this because we come from this background. So uh, visual inspection, visual intelligence, actually the way to uh, make AI more uh, accurate. And uh, um, AI has uh, limitations, okay? So there is actually, I would say maybe a controversial thing, but there is no such thing as artificial intelligence. Uh, okay. Sometimes it's confused uh, with uh, machine learning, deep learning, and even basic uh, things like automation. Okay, so uh, in order to gain intelligence, or call the system artificial intelligence system, the computer must think and act as humans, and they act and think rationally. And this thing is not achieved yet. So the AI systems vary and they, they depend on the training. They have very, very few limitations, like accuracy of those systems compromised. And the security and the privacy is compromised. There is a huge bias right. in the AI systems. As you know, there was recently a hype around this uh, uh, in the insure tech industry about uh, the bias in, in AI. So in order to solve, to overcome these limitations, uh, we use uh, intelligence uh, principles. So, uh, you know, as Lao Tzu mentioned one day, he said that uh, those who have knowledge don't predict, and those who predict don't have knowledge. So what we do, we bring knowledge to our domain. We don't rely on AI or on deep learning things only, on deep learning results. Actually, we, we check and double check the results of AI and validate with them with using a very strict and accurate, precise engineering disciplines like photogrammetry, remote sensing, CAD, and uh, so on and so forth. Now, tell me a little bit about the actual user experience of this. So, you know, how does your technology click in so with visual intelligence? How does that actually? then gets translated to a changing of consumer behavior, whether it's from the fleet management services, from an, the insurance perspective, from the, from the end customer's perspective who are filing the claim? Yeah, the process is very similar. Some of our competitors uh, work with uh, video, do very complicated stuff using hardware, special equipment. We actually ported remote sensing industry that uses sliders and uses very heavy equipment we ported it to a regular smartphone, so we don't rely on any hardware. We get an image from any source, any image made by digital camera or a smartphone device, and uh, we gain the intelligence from the image. So we build the information, extract multiple pieces out of this and build a puzzle and uh, uh, make the, let's say, the intelligence picture of uh, what we see. So. Uh, our detection is then backed by CAD system. So we don't only rely on AI that let's say this car has a dent on it, okay? We have Mm -hmm. an ontology of the car that uh, uh, running through multiple rules and reasoners, we can eliminate multiple false positives and we can eliminate, uh, let's say, non-logical results. Okay, so, so the, every time the vehicle changes, exchanges hands in everywhere, everywhere, like in fleet management, in insurance, our technology will be there to capture the state of the vehicle and to pro- produce a condition report of the vehicle and compare it to any other state. This is something that uh, 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 very few companies can do compare the situation, the state of the vehicle between different stages, only based on images. And our patent pending technology uh, actually is creating a unique signature of the damage. 
We call it a damage print. It's inspired by criminology. You can see the background all, all the time. And uh, this is a damage print. This is like a fingerprint of the damage. Regardless of the location, camera, and light conditions, the same damage will be detected exactly as it is. Okay, and we can say, okay, if someone tried to, to, to defraud insurance company, for instance, and uh, takes the broken door and mounts it on a new vehicle and takes a picture, we will catch him there. Okay, because this damage print has already been seen before. So this now is, obviously this is hugely relevant across you know a variety of industries, not just the automotive. Uh, wh where is this headed? So where where do you see this technology being implemented in our life uh, across different industries? This technology will be implemented not only in the automotive industry, which is uh, overwhelming in the, the market is uh, huge. And uh, actually, the COVID made it even more relevant, our technology, because people do, want, do not want to have a contact with the uh, adjuster, with, uh, you know, with uh, uh, going to a repair shop. They want to take a picture yeah. and uh, uh, get a quote. And uh, this, will, this technology will be implemented across industries and in property. It will be implemented in construction because uh, our unique uh, Unique technology allows us to actually connect between AI world, 3D, and CAD. So uh, we can measure things based on single image. And let's say calculate the lens of a dent or area of the dent or lens of a scratch. Even if it's the smallest scratch on a Ferrari car, we can do this. We can measure it. Okay, and this is uh, pretty much unique because before, you had to use special equipment, very expensive one. Okay, and today you can do it with a click of a phone. And uh, uh, the next thing, it will be assessment on the property before you buy it or before you insure it, uh, you name it. Uh, we have a lot of implementations of our technology in HLS industry. So we work with government entities that uh, trust in us and our technology was chosen as the best one today to tackle special problems of them. I think that it's, uh, you know, I, I can still remember up until now, every time I go and rent a car, I have to take papers and somebody comes with me and, and I have on the paper, it, it, they mark the, the scratches and the dents and I'm looking at it and I have no idea how to read this thing. And I have no idea, how, you know, if somebody makes a claim, there is no information here to to be and to have any substance. It's you know some one one's word against the others, and so uh, you know obviously you're touching here not just on you know replacing a manual behavior, but you're actually talking about augmenting it in, in a really meaningful way that that the human eye sometimes just can't, and we can't take one dent and compare it to the other, uh, and 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 it sounds like what you're then you know, abstracting and you're saying, well, this is not just relevant for automotive, this is relevant for anything where you want to determine the state of it, whether it's comparison across time or even just looking and then knowing from previous experiences what this damage looks like, whether it's estimating or, or for feedback. I think that's incredible. Exactly. We, we, can, uh, we can mimic the perception of a human and we can detect things much better than a human can, but the computer is not tired, you know, it's not, the human make mistakes and these mistakes cause a, a lot of money to, to car rentals and car sharing. And although the computer can predict things in the right way, but uh, right. of course, this, uh, you, you are right. This, this, the, the potential of this technology is, uh, is great. And uh, we were approached by multiple uh, players in different uh, industries. But as a startup, you must be focused on your core domain. And uh, as such, we are very much focused currently on this vertical. Okay. Amazing. And now give, give me a few stats about the company. So when did you start? Well, what, is the, what is the status of it today? How many people are you with? Uh, today, the company uh, uh, hires about 30 employees. We have a, a team of data scientists. We have a team of... Uh, R&D team, uh, we have a 3D team, which is very unique and special. Uh, and uh, we work with, uh, mm, uh, the, the team is distributed in multiple companies. We also hire people in, uh, uh, in uh, Palestine, Palestinians, 
Okay, the dream. Really? Uh, yes, it's a real wow. dukiyum, you know. So this Amazing. is, uh, 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 we hire them, we work with, uh, like, with this, in a synergy with them, and uh, we like their work, and I uh, think we are very satisfied, so they, they are. And uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we have submitted uh, two patents, of, patent applications, and uh, more to come, I have some more ideas. Uh, Incredible. So, and yeah, the company is, uh, has strategic investors and uh, partners, design partners, like industry leaders like Shlomo Sixth and uh, Avis. They are all uh, both customers and investors in the company. So the, the company is now, I think, in a very good place on, the, on this landscape. I love it, and I think that you know we're just starting to 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 talk, and we touched on a few different things. Whether it's you know the artificial intelligence, its role today, whether it's a, being used as a buzzword, being used as an actual technology, as an augmentation of of today's knowledge, and the difference between prediction and knowledge, uh, all the way to uh, to click-ins, and and how we're talking about the fraud industry, automotive, but then to real estate and property and, and this whole idea of standardization and, and actually being able to leverage deep technology and, and core mathematics to be able to, to do things that the human eye simply shouldn't, uh, ultimately, you know, making things just much more standardized and fair, uh, especially when we talk, uh, you know, fraud. Uh, I have a few questions for you, Dima, about who you are, less about visual intelligence, less about click-ins. And I want to take you back to middle school or high school. What was, you know, what fascinated you as a kid? What was one of your favorite subjects? Playing guitar, definitely. Playing guitar? Yeah. yeah I amazing. played in, I had a rock group, so I played in a rock group. I was a guitarist, and I also played drums. And uh, uh, when I was a kid, before school, I played chess, and uh, I was the first runner-up in, in, uh, in Ukraine in chess when I was a kid. And Whoa! I, yeah, but that then, is so cool. By then, I revealed the world of music and guitar, and uh, actually was fascinated by this. So, uh, till now, this is my passion: music. Wow! And who would be a role model of yours throughout your career, personally or professionally? Somebody that really inspires you. I mean, professionally, uh, I'm inspired by Eric Evans, who is one of the biggest architects. Uh, was a domain-driven design uh, uh, architect, and his book is a bestseller in in this area. So I learned a lot. Uh, Martin Fowler, all these guys are just played a fundamental role in the architecture and software architecture. Wow, very very cool. And three words that you would use to describe yourself. I'm. I would say I'm. A, Technology enthusiast and uh, solution architect. That's it. Okay. I love it. I bring the right technology to the problem. That's uh, and, that, and that's the real magic here. Dima, Todagaba, thank you very, very much. This was wonderful. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what this technology is going to do to society. Uh, obviously, you know, fraud is important, uh, rental, car insurance, uh, uh, automotive real estate. But, but I have a feeling that what you're, what you're touching on here, this, the question of, of leveraging visual intelligence to be able to augment and standardize a lot of the things that today are just subjective because we don't have better tools of measuring simply because we're human. That's going to make a big difference. Dima, todalaba, and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, thank you.